why should I become a Christian? Um, all major world religions have at their core the same principles. Of course, that there are, there are gods and goddesses or higher states of existence requiring action on the part of the adherents to ensure that they will, will arrive at a designated end. In other words, if we do the right things, we think the right way, or we adopt certain principles of life, we can hope to arrive at the desired destination or desi- destination after we die. And uh, all religions are alike because uh, the stated goal can be attained by human effort. And uh, Christianity, the only difference with Christianity is that it does not fit into that category because it is fundamentally opposed to the very principles that make an ideology by religion. Okay? It's not really a religion. It is a faith. In a religion, mankind reaches up to God uh, by himself try to reach to whoever they call God by him by themselves but with Christianity God reaches down towards man and in religion man works to attain his own salvation but uh, in Christianity God has already done the work required to grant us salvation think about what the Bible said in John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but uh, that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth is not condemned, but he that does not believe is condemned already. So do you understand? And also, let's check uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 5.21. He says, For he has made him to be seen for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So, the work was already done in Christianity, okay? Christianity must be considered on its own merits rather than in comparison to other religions because here it's all about something which already was done. We don't need to do anything, okay? We don't need to do anything. But uh, just as we cannot select, uh, let's say, the best fruit by comparing an apple with a, with a hammer, those are two different things. We cannot adopt a world view by comparing the statements of the Son of God with man-made religions. And in considering why you should become a Christian, it is important to uh, start with a bigger question. Why are you here? What is the reason? Why are you even here? Where did you come from? And uh, is there a purpose for your existence? Because every human being wrestles Uh, all day with those big questions because despite what you might be uh, have been taught back in the days about evolution theories and uh, and uh, and things like that we are deeply conscious that to be human is to be distinct from all other uh, forms of life animals don't grapple with uh, 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 philosophical uh, quadris only humans do we have a soul that longs for eternity we sense that we exist for a reason. That one is deep inside all of us and we cannot lie about this, okay? Now, we have to know that we exist for a reason, okay? And there is that sense which is always in our hearts each and every time telling us that, hey, you're not just here for nothing. You exist for a reason, And the Bible tells us exactly why we are like that. It is because we are created by Him, by God, to be more like Him than anything else that He created. Think about Genesis 1 verse 27. It says, So God created man in His own image. In the image of God created He Him, male and female created He them. And when God breathed His own life into the first man, man became a living soul. Okay, Genesis 2, 7, let me read for you. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Hmm. 
we were not just called into existence like the way God was saying, let there be light and there was light. Let there be animals and there was animals. Let there be fishes in this. No, we were created. And that soul is immortal. It reflects God's eternal nature. Okay? The soul will live forever, either with God or apart from Him. But uh, part of being human we have to understand means that we have free moral choice. Dogs do not make choices based on right or wrong. Apes do not ponder the meaning of life. Animals make choices based on their instinct and conditioning. Humans, however, are held to a different standard because we have an uh, innate understanding of morality. God's moral law is an, uh, attached into our hearts but with our free will, we violate it. That violation is called sin. Okay? Remember what the Bible says in Romans 5 verse 12. The Bible says, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Hmm? All have done what? Have sinned. They have violated that moral cord that is in them. And we understand that God is perfect, uh, heaven is perfect, and uh, we are not perfect ourselves. And none of us, n- nobody can say that they are perfect. The Bible tells us very clearly that there is none righteous, no, not one, in Romans 3.10. And our, and our goodness does not overweigh our bad. Okay? Sometimes people think, oh, because I'm going to do some good stuff, it's going to outweigh our my bad stuff, and then I'll be a righteous man. No. The Bible says in uh, Isaiah 64 verse 6 that we are all as unclean thing and all our righteousness are as filthy rags and we do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Do you see there's no amount of good things which we can do to uh, cater for the bad ones? And the justice of God requires that our high treason against our Creator can be punished. And the only rightful punishment of crime so great is eternal separation from God in hell. That's where we deserve. That's where we deserve going. The Bible tells us the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 We have a serious problem. We cannot solve that problem. And this problem is not altered by our level of of belief. Just as the law of gravity is not altered by our acceptance of it, if that is, if it exists, (laughs) okay, the problem of separation from God is a universal issue. So our job is not to ignore or redefine or hate it. Our job is often to listen to the one that we have offended and follow his directions for Uh, remedying the situation and if you feel a staring in your heart to seek God it is because God himself is seeking you why the Bible tells us in the book of Luke chapter 19 verse 10 for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost so God is trying to seek you and to tell you you need to do what is right you need to do what is right and that is following Jesus Christ, believing in Jesus Christ, and everything else will be sorted. Remember also John 6, 44. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will rise him up at the last day. So there's always uh, that spirit of God, that feeling of God trying to chase after you and to pull you. And life's highest honor is to be pursued by the creator of the universe and offered an invitation to become his own child. In addition to recognizing the great gift you are being offered, there are other reasons you should become a Christian. Your past, your present, and your future. Why should I become a Christian? Your past. Now think about your past. Since the moment you let your first wail, your nature has demanded its own way. Children do not have to be taught to sin. They come by it naturally because we all inherited the sin nature from our first parent, Adam. And the knowledge of our sin weighs on us. Some harden their hearts. They are drawn 
uh, into guilt in addictive behaviors or they lie to themselves about it. But our spirits know that we have done wrong and they seek resolution. Always, everybody knows that you're a sinner, you're doing something wrong. And we know our sin needs forgiveness, but we are unable to obtain our forgiveness. And when Jesus, the Son of God, came to earth, it was so that he can become the final sacrifice for those sins. Think about John chapter 10, verse 18. It says, No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment I have received of my Father. You see, nobody killed Jesus. Jesus had the power to lay down his life. He laid down his life for us. Okay? So for those who try to say, oh, Jesus was poking his nose into people's business. That's why he was killed. Come on, you're so wrong on that. When we trust Jesus' sacrifice, God declares our sin forgiven. Romans 4.25 who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our what? Justification. The reason why Jesus died, he did not die for his sins, he died for your sins and mine. And our past is wiped clean and we are given a fresh start. Psalms 103 verse 12, he says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us very far. He has separated us from our sin. The moment we believe, my friends, God did not simply overlook our sin. He punished it severely by placing it on his own perfect son. Colossians 2.14 It says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it at the cross. And of course, after that, God raised him from the dead. This is one of the most documented facts in ancient history. And no other religious le leader has uh, risen from the dead. Tell me, who? Who rose from the dead? No one else. It's only Jesus. God pardon exists only for those who believe in his son and bow to his authority. Acts 4.12 Neither is there salvation in any other for there is only there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved we do not earn forgiveness we simply receive it now another question again on the same thing why should I then become a Christian think about your present I've just told you about your past think about your present Becoming a Christian not only cancels the debt that you owed God, but it also allows you to step into the purpose of which you were created. God designed each of us uh, for a unique purpose that we discover only in relationship with Him. Human beings are like mirrors. A mirror serves uh, no useful purpose when covered in mud. Likewise, human beings serve no eternal purpose while they are covered in sin and shame. When a mirror is wiped clean, it reflects the beauty around it. When we allow God to wipe our sin away with the blood of Jesus, we begin to reflect the beauty and the glory of God himself. As we grow in faith and wisdom, we reflect his image in unique ways. We discover the gifts that God has entrusted us to serve him and others and no longer are we chasing our own happiness we find deeper fulfillment in living out God's plan for our lives Jesus encouraged his followers to store up treasures in heaven in Luke 12 verse 33 and 30, uh, uh, to 34 and also Ma Matthew 6 19 to 20 and he promised rewards to those who live for him I have to read for you this one think about these rewards that God promised in Revelation 22 verse 12. He said, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work shall be. Now the final point, why should I become a Christian? Think about your future. Physical death is not the end. Jesus conquered death and he invites us to join him in eternal life. 
John 6 verse 37. He says, All the Father has given me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. You will not be cast out because Jesus already paid our ticket and we have to accept it on his terms. Mere acknowledgement of the fact uh, that Jesus is God is not salvation. Satan also knows the truth and does not trust in it. Think about this. The Bible told us in James chapter 2, verse 19, Thou believest that there is one God, thou does well. Devils also believe and they tremble. So, are, are devils saved because they, they, they believe that Jesus is God? No. No. It is all about believing in the blood, believing that Jesus died for you. Just believing that Jesus is God makes no difference. Is one part, yes, you have to believe that Jesus is God. That's one part. But that's a half, half, half a gospel. Okay? The bottom line for each individual is this. Who or what is the boss of my life? You have to ask yourself, who is that boss of my life? Who is the ruler of my life? And the answer to that question determines where you will spend your eternity. You should become a Christian if you have the faith to believe and the willingness to surrender your life and future to the one who knows you best. Think about Psalms chapter 139 verse 13. It says, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance, substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret, when I was made in secret, I want you to see this. And curiously, wrought in the lowest part of the earth, thine eyes did see my substance yet being unperfect in thy book all my members were written which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them my friends God knows us he knows us so much that we cannot even know ourselves and it is the most important decision anyone can make that's the most important decision. In his book, um, The Great Divorce, C.S. Lewis once quoted and said, and I quote, there are only two kinds of people in the, in the world at the end. Those who say to God, thy will be done, and those who, whom God says in the end, thy will be done. And all that, they are either in hell or heaven if you wanted to do your will my friends you will end up in hell if you want to do the will of God you will end up in heaven and that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson hope it was a blessing to you hope you've learned something and remember you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family and please don't forget to favorite our podcast and subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post another Bible question. And if you'd like to get saved or you need a, a step-by-step order of salvation, that is how to get saved. Or maybe you want to get a few verses so that you can well uh, preach to your family and friends. Or maybe you feel led to support our ministry. Please visit our website, keithmwoki.com. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon the next Bible study. God bless you.